Yo, this is uh, uh, B Boy Tech Report. We're chilling with Mark Verbose, uh, Verbose Systems, or Reverse Electronics, right? Yeah. yeah. So, hey, I know we were supposed to get together a while ago, and uh, we just got a chance to get together, and this is cool. Is that Knobcon? How's your Knobcon going so far? It's going all right. Um, I think we're in the in the dungeon here when yeah, it comes to traffic. Yeah. But, no uh, doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Well, it kind of picks up a little bit a little later yeah. on. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you got started with the both uh, electronics because when I met you at um, um, where was it Analog Haven. Haven, you told me it was an interesting story like you were fixing boot plugs and stuff like that. So yeah. Okay. So um, when I was just starting out in electronics, I I um, met this guy who was 20 years older than me. Who, uh, at that time in the 90s. Uh, yeah. it, this guy was was doing uh, most of the repairs on the vintage Luka systems that were out there, and he had a, a really extensive collection of old synthesizers. So when I I went over to his place and saw all this stuff, then I knew that I wanted to spend as much time as I could there because you know that wasn't even an opportunity that would come again. So um, I kind of informally um, apprenticed under him, learning about um, building synthesizers and fixing them and whatever. And then as time went on, um, I got to know a lot about the, 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 the instruments, and he didn't so much want to do repairs on them anymore, so uh, kind of passed that work. Yeah, it's kind of like a passing of the torch then. Huh? Exactly. Wow. So um, about, I guess, maybe 13, 14 years ago, I started to, to do a lot of that kind of work, repairing vintage super systems. And that evolved into doing some custom work for, there aren't that many systems out there, some of 200 series stuff, maybe about 30 systems. So um, most of the, the owners are really passionate and they're really expensive systems, so they tend to be successful people who yeah. really want to have um, certain things. And so I started to do some custom parts for those systems, like modules that weren't done originally or whatever. And, um, had a little bit of a, a reputation for doing that work. So um, when I first, uh, I guess about seven years ago, came in contact with um, Sean from Analog Haven and some of the people from from the this community, he started to put pressure on me to get involved in the Eurorack stuff so that it was more accessible and for more users. And initially I was apprehensive because I was really um, committed to the movement world and right. really a lot of familiarity with that and didn't want to um, get away from it. But, you know, he wore me down over time. And then right. um, in 2013, um, we hatched the idea of doing this product line where um, a lot of the, the good ideas from the Buchla stuff and some of the ideas that I uh, used in my custom stuff and some new ideas uh, into this system that was um, really based on the idea of making instruments from the interface back and uh, making um, musician-driven modular stuff that wasn't so um, technical and um, old that it, that it uh, appealed only to engineers or techie people, but it actually could be used to make music. Um, so in 2014, we launched this uh, product line in, in uh, the NAMM show in January. and. Um, and you know, kind of hit the ground running. We launched with a, 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 a line of uh, five modules right from the beginning. Okay. All Six the five years. modules here? That you uh, yeah, modules? all five. So the original ones were the complex oscillator, the dual four pole, uh, amplitude and tone controller, the voltage multi stage, and the harmonic oscillator. Okay. And um, that was that was a nice place to start because we wanted to have some kind of complete system. But there were some holes, so over time we've added the touch play keyboard and the multi envelope is a, a flexible, creative um, envelope generator that does a whole bunch of tricks. And um, the scan and pan is a, a mixer that allows uh, yeah, voltage control of the level and panning and also allows um, selecting of different channels from voltage or mixing together waves from a, a macro environment. And, uh, the random sampling is um, from this last year. Um, it's a take on some of the ideas from the Google Source of Uncertainty, the 
um, fluctuating random voltages with voltage control of the speed, um, some step uh, random voltages that you send pulses in and get different uh, random streams out, uh, a four stage analog shift register, which um, a little bit more esoteric, it's a bank of sample and holds that pass down the signals down the line. Oh, some no wow. yeah, some, some noise and um, and then we also uh, this year put out the sequence selector which is a simple five stage sequencer at the, the core level but it allows um, transposition um, on the, the main CV channel there's a transpose in so it can be used together with another sequencer such as the voltage multi stage to make longer sequences that transpose like arpeggiators or um, or select using these selectors actually can pick um, different signals and those signals can be anything from control voltages, audio rate signals, wow. pulses, whatever. That sounds fun. Yeah. But um, in, a, in a small package, a bunch of little tricks. So um, yeah, that's where we are now. Um, and the touch plate, um, yeah. weren't you one of the first ones to do a touch plate in your old rack? Well, uh, I, I'm, it, not, I'm not sure about that. I, um, no, I mean, but it, it's the one that stands out to me is the one that I've seen the most. Maybe because it's red. Yeah, well, that, that helps. They have, a, they have like a loud look. Um, well, yeah, there are, are, are a few options out there now. Um, obviously, the, the touch play keyboard um, goes back to the, the Bukla idea of what he was doing in the, in the 60s and 70s. And um, these are capacitance sensitive. They're, uh, actually, the, the, the panel is, is a circuit board. Okay. And uh, so the pads that, that would be the, the solder pads when building the electronics, they're actually used as um, sensors where the amount of surface area of the finger that's touching it is translated into a pressure output. Okay. So in a, in a conventional piano or organ type keyboard, the key is moving and the velocity signal is actually a measurement of how quickly the key moves from one end to the other. But since it's not moving anywhere, we don't have velocity. Right. So we use pressure in, in sort of the same way. Okay. And because it's measuring the amount of skin touching the key, if we touch it lightly, we have less skin touching than if we touch it more, uh, right. they push harder. So it actually turns out to be a nice uh, uh, voltage uh, source to control things like uh, filter cutoff or um, volume or, or something just that helps to uh, add that humanized uh, thing that's sometimes missing from electronic. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, I like that. I like the idea of being able to touch the music, feel the music, kind of play the music. Although I do like the sequence thing and stuff, but I think there's a good thing about balance. Just because it probably, I mean, that's feeling of the music. When you're literally touching it, you can feel it. <laughs> it's true. Something, you know? And the the, um, the subtlety of the, the, the changes in those controls that happen from you reaching out and touching it with your hand rather than controlling some sort of uh, device that's yeah. making the decision. It really does make it have um, an infinite amount of variation. And in electronic sounds, what we often are missing is some subtle variation that right. real sounds would always have. You know, electronic ones can get trapped into the yeah. really sterile yeah, yeah, and yeah, fixed. Exactly. And it, the rigidity sometimes exactly. is very prevalent and the other feeling, the feeling is not necessarily there. So this, the um, complete oscillator. Complex. Is, that, is, yeah. is it complex? I'm yeah, sorry. Complex. Actually, that's what I was about to ask. Yeah. <laughs> the complex oscillator, I've been looking at a couple of different options for complex oscillators. I mean, tell me exactly what this thing does and what makes it special than just an oscillator. Well, um, there are, like you said, there are a bunch of, uh, of, of this type of oscillator out there on the market now that are largely based on the, the ideas that were in the Bupa 259 from the 70s, which the idea is that um, primarily two different um, things that it brought to the table that are different than, than other options. The first being that there's a, a built-in modulation, so a, a main, a primary oscillator and a modulation oscillator, and that modulation oscillator, we can hear it more, um, actually can be, can modulate the, the frequency or the, or the pitch, so, or sorry, the frequency or the, um, the volume, so, Right now it's doing amplitude modulation, which can go up into, can go 
elevate to the like modulation or at the, the lower frequencies, just a volume modulation. Or frequency modulation, you have the ability to control how much of that actively with the control. And the second thing that, that, that um, these types of oscillators do that's, that's different than a traditional um, mode modular East Coast type of philosophy is that although they have the triangle square sine outputs, the, the master output actually has a, a more complicated wave shaper that allows us to, to address the, the wave shape in a, in a more dynamic way with voltage control of if the harmonics are even or odd and if they're higher order or lower order. And what's behind the scenes of that are waves that we're familiar with because they're square or saw and sine and uh, at the lower order you're actually hearing what they call wave folding, which is okay. taking the sine wave and flipping you know, it over I on itself. To, I used to mistake wave folding for some sort of distortion. Well, in a sense it is distortion because um, in a classic distortion situation you just are clipping the top as you're, if you imagine the sine wave hitting this uh, distortion point, it's just flattening off the top. But what's happening in a wave folder is that that threshold, like a mirror, reflects the signal okay. down. So if that sine wave goes up, it hits that threshold and then becomes like an opposite going down. And in this case, there are uh, seven thresholds where it will keep hitting the thresholds okay. and going back and forth and so uh, making the, okay. the the, the rising wave have a bunch of um, extra folds in okay. it, yeah. hence the name. And um, it's an interesting way to make a to make a sound that is a little bit like a, a filter resonating yeah. yeah. or resonant filter, but but different. And, yeah, it's um, very cool. yeah. and it's quite a nice um, parameter to modulate um, over the course of a note in the way that we normally would with a low pass filters cutoff, but to get a, a, a different sound. And really only in the last few years has, has that been a popular thing. And it was in the Bukla instruments and the surge wave multipliers and in the 70s, but yeah. it somehow was overlooked for all right, these right. years, and just recently it's become really uh, popular. Yeah, I'm really interested in it. I mean, I'm interested in like complex oscillators just because of the way you know you get one oscillator that kind of does FM on the other, and, um, and then the wave folding and all that. You get so much control and get so much, I guess. That's why it's called a complex oscillator, yeah. though. But you get so much, uh, so many timbres and, and kind of just sounds that you can't normally get. They, well, they all kinda... of, well, I think all of those options were available to you, but it would require a lot of patching and, and delicate um, adjustment to get it into the right place right. to make it work. Whereas this, it's all right there. So you, maybe if you didn't have it right here with just the turn of the one knob, you wouldn't, um, or a flip of a switch, you wouldn't do it. Yeah. But because it's here, it's actually packaged in a way that makes it really Right, right. This stuff, and that I think is is a uh, is a good thing for making music. It's yeah. actually putting you in a position where you're driven toward um, interesting things um, easily and, and effortlessly. Positive development. Yeah, yeah, uh, no that, that, that's the direction that um, modular synthesis takes recently. Is that it? it uh, you find m more complicated modules that have a lot going on behind the scenes, but maybe present something that would be unfriendly to patch yeah, out yeah, of individual no pieces. But yeah. when it's in there, it's easy to get to it, and you can actually um, just 
think like a musician rather than thinking like uh, an engineer. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. How much is the uh, complex software to go to? Uh, I think it's five forty nine. Five forty nine. Nice. Um, an interesting thing that maybe isn't immediately apparent by looking at it is that these. Uh, fluctuating random voltages at the top, they of course are uh, usable for, for the purpose of making random uh, modulation on something, and they go from very, very slow up to fast enough, actually, what you might not immediately notice is that they go fast enough that they can become noise sources. Because of that, they can um, be used. They can be used to make um, drum sounds, actually, like <laughs> just brought it up this year? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll, take, I'll take the site. When I put the video up, I'll put it in the video. And this also uh, puts out a random gate, which is correlated to the, the, um, the speed of the fluctuating CVs, but it's not correlated in the sense that only when the CV is high, the gate goes high, or something like that. It's um, Unrelated to that, so okay. these can be used for um, for stuff like. I try to do is rather than just clone those Google things, I, I like to to um, learn from them and, and take those ideas and then try to develop those ideas in different directions. Not necessarily make something better, but make something that's more suited to the way that I want to use it. Okay. Or the, okay. as, as a musician myself, what would I like to use and how would I like it to work? So, um, you know, sometimes that means simplifying the idea and sometimes right. that means making it more complicated. It's just a case by case okay. uh, situation. Very cool man. Well I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. This has been a long time coming. I'm glad we got a chance to chat. Me too. All right.